the atom is made of three subatomic particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons. The electrons and the protons are very densely compact inside the nucleus, and the nucleus is in the center of the atom. The electrons are diffusely dispersed throughout the volume that is the sphere that is the atom. We use symbols uh, commonly accepted, E for electron, P for proton, N for neutron. The electron, as you know, has a negative one charge, the proton has a positive one charge, and the neutron carries no charge. The um, mass of the electron is, is uh, several thousand times less than the mass of the um, protons and the neutrons. The mass here is given in units of kilograms, but another common unit is the atomic mass unit that's used to describe the mass of the protons, the electrons, and the neutrons. And the uh, neutron is assigned an atomic mass unit of one, a proton is assigned an atomic mass unit of one, and a, an electron is assigned an atomic mass unit of 0 .0005. So you can see why we say that most of the mass for the atom comes from the protons and the neutrons which are in the nucleus. And it's really difficult to wrap your brain around um, how uh, tiny the nucleus is compared to the atomic um, radius. So one way we can do that is think of a baseball stadium and how large a, baseball, a large professional baseball stadium is. Um, and you can imagine that the nucleus is, is in the center of that stadium and is the size of a pea, a green pea. Um, and then the electrons would be just flitting around here like a fly um, in the stadium. And so most of the space within the atom is just empty space. Okay? So that's the image we have when we think about the atom. Okay? Um, to distinguish between the term atomic mass and mass number. This is a, a little square out of a periodic table with for the element chromium. Number is listed and right above the elemental symbol, and the atomic mass is listed below the symbol. Okay, and so whenever we represent elements on the periodic table, we're really representing an average of all the isotopes of that particular element. Okay, and so in this particular case, chromium can exist. Um, as four different isotopes, chromium-50, chromium-52, 53, or 54. But the most abundant isotope is uh, chromium-52, and its abundance is 83.789%. That means if you had a sample that had 10 chromium atoms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, eight of them would be chromium 52, and the other two would be one or the other of those, okay? And then if you had 100, 83 of them or 84 of them, depending on which 100 you picked, would be um, chromium 52, and the remainder would be some small fraction of those other three, all right? And so it's um, the atomic mass then is the uh, weighted average of the masses of all the isotopes, the atomic number, of course, is just the number of protons, which is the defining characteristic of um, a particular element. Uh, and then the mass number is the sum of the number of protons plus neutrons in the nucleus. Okay? Okay. So for chromium, what we just looked at, chromium is, let me see, on the periodic table, chromium is right here, so it happened to have a um, atomic mass of 52.00 rounded off to the 100th place. That's highly unusual. Normally, um, the uh, atomic masses, excuse me, the atomic mass is 52.00. Normally, the atomic mass is some uh, f uh, fraction in the tenths and hundredths place. Uh, for example, let's look at this one. This is neon. Um, and the atomic mass for neon right there is 20.18.